Hello everyone, welcome back. So today we are going to study regarding certain terms and uh, terminologies uh, which will help us understand an atom completely. And uh, we will be seeing regarding the mass and every detailed concept we will be studying today which will help further in the mole concept as well. So starting off, First, we need to see how we can represent any atom of an element. For example, the element is X for us. So, now this X element, we are talking about one atom of this element X. So, if I take this one atom, it will contain electrons and it will contain protons and neutrons. Now, this proton and neutron will be present where? Will be present in the nucleus of the atom and this electron will be around the nucleus. Now, how can we represent this particular atom of the element X? So, we represent it as A in the superscript and Z in the subscript. So, A denotes what? A denotes the total number of nucleons. Total number of nucleons. That means it denotes N plus P. Neutrons plus protons. How many neutrons are, uh, plus how many protons are present in the particular atom of this element. And Z represents the atomic number. What is atomic number? It represents the number of electrons that is present in the atom. Now, this A is also known as mass number. Why mass number? Because in any element, uh, electrons mass is very, very less. In any element you take, the mass of the electron is almost negligible in comparison to proton and neutron. And the mass of proton and neutron is almost comparable. It's almost equal. So whatever the mass of this X is, it is solely because of the presence of protons and neutrons. So this A depicts what? This A depicts the amount of protons and neutrons. And protons and neutrons will in turn uh, is responsible for the mass of the element. So that's why it is also known as the mass number. Right. Now coming to the important terms, first term that we need to know is atomic mass unit. AMU. AMU is nothing but atomic mass unit or it is also known as Dalton, one Dalton, which is represented as DA, or nowadays it is also known as only U, small u, which is known as unified mass. Unified mass. Now, what is one AMU? How it is defined? One AMU is equal to, or it's defined as one twelfth of the mass of one carbon-12 atom. That means 1 by 12. Now, mass of one carbon-12 atom. What will be the mass of one carbon-12 atom? Now, definitely, if I'm talking about carbon-12, I need to find out the mass of this particular one atom. So definitely how many total number of nucleons are there? This is the measure of N plus P, neutrons plus protons. So the mass will be the total number of nucleons that is 12 into our mass of one nucleon. Okay, mass of 1 nucleon. So, 1 by 12. 
So mass of one C twelve atom will be twelve into mass of one nucleon. So twelve and twelve gets cancelled. So one A mu is equal to mass of one nucleon, which is equal to one point six six into ten to the power minus twenty four grams. Or if we denote it in kilograms, then it will be one point six six into ten to the power minus twenty seven kilograms. So this is the value of one a m u or one u. We need to remember this value. This will be very very important. Now, now the next particular term is again related to somehow to this uh, a m u. That is the relative atomic mass R dot A dot M. Now this relative atomic mass R dot A dot M is equal to mass of mass of one atom of any element one atom of element upon upon 1/12th the mass of one c12 atom now this factor this denominator factor just now we have seen that is nothing but our 1 am u correct now mass of one atom of any element i am calculating this part now numerator part so let's say the element is x any element we can take so the mass of one atom of that specific element will be total number of nucleons in that element uh, x Total number of nucleons into mass of one nucleon. Okay, mass of one nucleon. Now suppose if you keep this as it is, like one by twelve into mass of one C two C twelve atom was what? One by twelve into twelve into mass of One nucleon. Here we have seen this particular term. I am placing in the denominator of this R A R dot A dot M. Now what will happen? This twelve and twelve gets cancelled. Mass of one nucleon and mass of one nucleon gets cancelled. So what will be the value of our relative atomic mass? It will be nothing but the total number of nucleons that is present in any element it will have no unit okay it will have no unit why because it is relative atomic mass so it states that how much heavier suppose we have 1 amu now if i say uh, the relative atomic mass of any particular element is 19 so what am i what am i referring to i am referring to that this element x is 19 times heavier than 1 amu okay as compared to 1 amu this particular element x is how many times heavier 19 times heavier so definitely it will have no units now so we need to remember this particular thing from this term that relative atomic mass is what is equal to the total number of nucleons that are present what is happening fine let it be uneven only correct ha huh. now the next term the next term is our atomic mass the first one was relative atomic mass now it is atomic 
mass. Now, what is atomic mass? Atomic mass is nothing but mass of one atom of the element. Now, this term also you have seen somewhere. You have seen it in the definition of relative atomic mass. So, relative atomic mass, you can see the numerator part, mass of one atom of the element. So, that is nothing but our atomic mass. So, here we can say that in relative atomic mass, what did we see? Relative atomic mass is equal to this entire thing, mass of one atom of an element, which we can call as atomic mass divided by 1 12th the mass of 1 C12 atom which is known as 1 AMU. So what will be atomic mass from here? Atomic mass will be equal to relative atomic mass into 1 AMU where our relative atomic mass is what? Total number of nucleons. So, for example, let's say, uh, let's do a chart itself. Let, let's see uh, how what, what the relative atomic mass and atomic mass will be. Right. For example, we are taking elements here and here relative atomic mass and here atomic mass. So, suppose we have uh, any sodium. 2311. Okay. So this 2311, if you ask me, ma'am, how to remember this? So definitely you have studied periodic table in 10th grade. So for now, at least you should remember till uh, atomic number 20. Okay. So from there only you have to memorize all this. And then let's say, for example, another one I'm taking calcium 40, 20. Okay. So for these two, we will see. So, relative atomic mass is nothing but the total number of nucleons. And total number of nucleons is our superscript 1. That is our A. This is A for sodium and this is A for calcium. So, if I write the relative atomic mass, it will be just 23. And for calcium, it will be 40. Now, atomic mass. Atomic mass, just now we have written that atomic mass is equal to relative atomic mass into 1 amu. So, definitely for sodium, it will be 23 into 1 amu. So, it will be 23 amu. And here it will be 40 amu. Now, this we have found out the atomic mass in atomic mass unit or Dalton. But suppose... In the question, it is asked, find out the atomic mass. For example, one more we will do. Let's say fluorine, 19, 9. So you have to find the atomic mass of fluorine in grams. Atomic mass of fluorine in grams. So how to find out? First, you know that uh, relative atomic mass will be how much? Total number of nucleons. That is nothing but our 19. And then what will be our atomic mass in atomic mass? Atomic mass will be our 19 AMU. Now, we know that 1 AMU is equal to 1.66 into 10 to the power minus 24 grams. So, 19 AMU will be equal to 19 into 1.66 into 10 to the power minus 24 gram. So, this particular multiplication term will give you a certain value which will be the atomic mass of fluorine in grams. And this is the atomic mass of fluorine, only atomic mass. That is relative atomic mass into 1 AMU. U. So, for this also, if we are asked to find out in grams, it will be 23 into 1.66 into 10 to the power minus 24 grams. And for calcium, it will be 40 into 1.66 into 10 to the power minus 24 grams. 
I hope this part is entirely clear to you. Moving on, next term that we have is moles. Fourth term, moles. Now, what is a mole? Mole is a uh, quantity with which we measure any amount of substance. And mole represents n a number of entities. Number of entities. What does that mean? Entities can be anything. Atoms, molecules, ions, okay, anything it can be. If I say uh, one mole of pencil, then that means it contains that one mole of pencil means how many total pencils are there? Any number of pencils are there. Okay? Now, what is the value of this Na? This Na value will be equal to, this is known as Avogadro's number. Yes. That same person who has given that Avogadro's law. What was Avogadro's law? Volume of any gas. Equal volume of all gases contains equal number of molecules. Not atoms, molecules. Right. So that same person has given this Na. This is a very special number which you need to remember in your entire 11th and 12th grade. Okay. So, N is equal to Avogadro's number. Now, remember this magical number 6.023 into 10 to the power 23. So, when I say 1 mole of pencils, it means 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 pencils. When I say 1 mole of water bottle, I mean 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 water bottles. So like that, one mole atoms will contain Na atoms, one mole molecules will contain Na molecules and so on. Now, this, this thing is very, very important. Please mark it. You have to remember this value. Now, Coming on to the, we will talk more about this moles later. We will be seeing how to calculate moles and stuff. But before that, some terminologies are left. We will complete that first. Next is our gram atomic mass. Gram atomic mass. What is gram atomic mass? Now, atomic mass was mass of one atom of element. Gram atomic mass is the mass of or atomic mass of one mole of atoms. Or we can also say or atomic mass of any atoms. Any atoms is nothing but one mole of atoms only. So, atomic mass of one mole of atoms or atomic mass of any atoms. Now, for example, if, if uh, let's start with the question itself. For example, the question is find gram atomic mass of oxygen and nitrogen. Okay. So, how to represent an atom of oxygen? 16, 8. And if I represent nitrogen, it will be 14, 7. Again, I'm telling this is coming from periodic table. Don't get, don't get confused. You have already studied this and came. This is our mass number. This is our atomic number. Now, relative atomic mass was what? Relative atomic mass for oxygen will be 16. For then atomic mass will be what? Atomic mass will be 16 into 1 AMU. That is 16 AMU. Now, I am finding out this atomic mass in grams. This is an AMU, right? So, if I convert this into grams, it should be multiplied with 1.66 into 10 to the power minus 24 grams. This is the amount in 
atomic mass of oxygen in grams so this this is the mass of one atom of oxygen so gram atomic mass that is our mass of any atoms of what of oxygen will be what one atom ka one atom of oxygen mass is this much so for any atoms it will be n into 16 into 1.66 into 10 to the power minus 24 grams now when now we need to focus on two things one is this n a another one is this 1 amu value okay now this value 1.66 into 10 to the power minus 24 this value is equivalent to 1 upon n a when we will do mathematically 6 1 upon 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 we will get what 1.66 into 10 to the power minus 24 and this will come in grams don't confuse this will come in grams okay not kg don't put minus 27 kg kgs so when you are taking avogadro's number whatever value this is coming this will be in grams so now definitely in this value place i can write as 1 upon any let's see it will be na into 16 into 1 upon na grams na na gets cancelled so what will be the gram atomic mass of oxygen it will be 16 grams it will be 16 grams so i want you to try for this particular substance nitrogen this will be this you do alone okay so definitely you will get it as 14 grams right now one important point here is they don't get confused look at the question read the question what they are asking if they say atomic mass in grams then it will be what 16 into 1.66 into 10 to the power minus 24 grams if i specifically talk about oxygen over here okay so if they are asking atomic mass in grams then it will be 16 into 1.66 into 10 to the power minus 24 grams but if they are asking gram atomic mass gram atomic mass then it will be what for oxygen only if i say it will be 16 grams remember this this is very very important don't get confused in these two atomic mass in grams and gram atomic mass gram atomic mass mass means the mass of one mole of oxygen atom but here in this case the they are asking regarding the mass of one atom only in grams the unit just you have to change right now coming on to the next term that is our molecule molecule what is a molecule now we will write certain points regarding molecules we know that atoms will combine with each other to form molecules we have studied regarding the laws of chemical combination and we have seen there that atoms do combine gets combined in fixed whole number uh, ratio not whole number ratio fixed uh, composition whole number ratio that is different thing uh, the atoms are getting combined in fixed proportion proportion is a correct word fixed proportion uh, to form certain molecules and compounds now so we can say that a molecule it is the smallest particle which has 
a free existence which will have a free existence so it is the smallest particle which will have a free existence by its own and definitely a particular molecule can be we can break it further into atoms a molecule we can break it further into atoms by different chemical and physical methods and atomicity i have already discussed before what is atomicity a quick revision atomicity is nothing but number of atoms present in a molecule molecule okay number of atoms present in a molecule for example h2 how many atoms are there two hydrogen atoms plus one oxygen atom so atomicity is 3 for example h2so4 so it has two atoms of hydrogen one atom of sulfur and four atoms of oxygen so the atomicity will be total 2 plus 1 plus 4 that is 7 for example o3 it contains three oxygen atoms so the atomicity will be 3 so this is how we calculate atomicity i had already discussed this in avogadro under avogadro's law so i hope you have understand this atomicity part now coming on to the next term that is our now this there are two terms that are left we will study it together only that will be helpful molecular mass and gram molecular mass molecular mass and gram molecular mass so if i talk about molecular mass molecular mass means mass of one molecule and what is gram molecular mass it is the mass of one mole of molecules or we can say mass of any number of molecules any number of molecules so we will see certain uh, molecular masses and gram molecular masses of certain element uh, certain uh, molecule so for example i'm taking here molecules here i'll write the molecular mass and here the gram molecular mass so for example h2 so what will be the molecular mass of uh, h2 it will be it will be there are two hydrogen atoms here right so 1 plus 1 one hydrogen atom weighs One, one, ah, uh, one amu. So this molecular mass will be expressed in amu. Gram molecular mass will be expressed in grams. Okay, so it will be two amu, and this one will be two grams. See, we have already calculated in case of atomic mass and gram atomic mass that whenever they are asking atomic mass, then it will be the total number of nucleons the numeral value will be the total number of nucleons and whenever they are saying atomic mass or molecular mass it will be expressed in am and if they are talking about gram atomic mass or gram molecular mass the unit will be grams and the numeral value will be the total number of nucleons that are present so in molecules what happens we add the total number of uh, nucleons of each atom that is present in the molecule for example let's say h2o there are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atoms so two hydrogen means how many nucleons two and one oxygen means how many nucleons 16 so molecular mass will be total number of nucleons and the unit will be amu so it will be 18 amu and gram molecular mass will be nothing but 
graphs. Now, let's say one more example we will take H2SO4. Two hydrogen, total number of nucleons is two, plus one sulfur. One sulfur, how many nucleons it contains? Sulfur contains 32 nucleons. Okay. And there are four oxygen. So one oxygen contains 16, right? One oxygen contains 16 nucleons. So, 4 oxygen will contain 4 into 16. So, it will be 64. So, molecular mass will be 2 plus 32 plus 64. These are the total nucleons of all the atoms that are present in H2SO4. So, this will be the answer that is our 98 amu and what will be gram molecular mass it will be 98 grams so i hope this particular uh, gram molecular mass and molecular mass is clear to you so this difference again here that important term will come that molecular mass if they are asking in grams suppose this example water example i am taking so they are asking molecular mass in grams. Then we will just multiply 18 into 1.66 into 10 to the power minus 24 grams. Okay. But if they say gram molecular mass, it will be 18 grams only. So this particular point you have to take note of. Right. So we have covered all the terms and uh, uh, next topic will be our calculation of moles, which we will cover in the next video. Thank you so much. See you in the next class.